If you use the internet in any capacity, your personal information is scattered everywhere online. You can get a sense of this by even googling your own name. You leave small traces of yourself with social media, online purchases, and even email accounts. Whatever the case, the internet and its advertising giants know a huge amount about your life. This is The Digital Prepper, and today I'll be talking about some steps that you can take to remove yourself and your data from the internet. Before we get started, I just want to remind you guys that if you do like the video and want to discuss anything regarding digital preparedness or just preparedness in general, be sure to help get this video out to more potential preppers by leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing to see more like this. With that being said, let's get started. So depending on when you were born, there's a good chance that you've either spent several decades online or maybe have never even known an offline world. Companies like Amazon, Facebook, and Google all have loads of data about you, including things like your likes and dislikes, social connections, and even health information. These companies collect huge quantities of information about you and sell it to other companies that use the data for various things like targeted advertising. Collecting and selling your data is big business. In 2019, the United States state of Vermont passed a law requiring all companies buying and selling third-party personal information to register. In response, more than 120 firms logged their details. They included companies building search tools to look up individuals, firms handling location data, and those specializing in your health data. These companies collect everything from your name, your address, and date of birth, to things like your social security number, buying habits, and even where you went to school and for how long. The first step to removing yourself from the internet is to remove your information from these data brokers. You can manually delete them yourself from these sites one at a time, though the process isn't straightforward. You'll often have to contact them via email, fill out online forms, and provide extra identification information. Also, depending on where you live, you might have additional legal options. For example, if you live in California, the California Consumer Privacy Act, or CCPA, gives California residents the right to ask companies to not sell their data to provide a copy of that data or to delete that data. The second part of removing your online presence is to seek out and remove all of those old accounts that you do not use anymore. There's no real shortcut to finding and deleting these accounts, and you'll probably need a good deal of time for this. Start by making a list of all of the old accounts that you do remember and collecting the email addresses and usernames that you've used. From there, you want to work through them one by one. Your social media presence has the largest impact on your online footprint, so if you want to do this, you should start here. It is important to delete your accounts, not just log out or just stopping to use them. Most of these websites will completely delete your content within about 30 days, and if you're not ready to commit to deleting all of your social media, you can make your accounts private, but do remember that there will still be an account that can possibly be tracked and the data on there sold. You should also search for your name and combine it with some other pieces of personal data, for instance like your email address or where you live, just to see what comes up. If you're diving deep into your online history, and attempting to remove old posts on forums or other similar services, you might have to email the owners of those websites. You could also enter your email address into the data breach notification service called Have I Been Pwned, which is a reputable site. This will search the internet and cross-reference your email against companies who may have suffered data breaches and would probably remind you of some sort of obscure old account that you might have forgotten about. Finally, 
there are some dedicated services that will attempt to look for and delete all of your old accounts by scanning your emails. The issue with some of these services, besides the fact that they might ask for payment, is that they themselves might also collect and sell your data. So personally, I wouldn't recommend any of these third-party services. Because you're obviously going to need an email address to stay in touch with the websites that you're trying to remove yourself from, you will want to wait to deactivate your email accounts last. If you truly want to wipe your online presence clean, you will have to deactivate and delete your email accounts as well. Every email service has a different way to delete their accounts, and you can follow those directions on those websites to figure out how to delete that data as well. Looking at these ways to remove yourself from the internet, to say that they are time consuming is an understatement. There may be some instances where you may want to try and speed things up by using legal counsel to remove your data from the internet, especially if it involves defamatory statements, explicit photographs, and other harmful content. With this being said, you will want to do your own research on this in order to get that done. To wrap things up, deleting yourself from the internet may be wildly impractical for most people. Depending on your lifestyle, most people need at least an email account to even exist in today's society. With that being said, there are some steps that you can take so that you can keep the amount of data about yourself online to a minimum. When you're signing up for new online accounts, consider whether or not you need to enter your personal details or whether it would be better to use a burner account to mask your identity. You should use sites like ProtonMail instead of using any sort of quote big tech corporation like Google or Yahoo for email. And think about using a web browser like Brave that would prevent websites from collecting your data in the first place. Finally, if you are 100% ready to move forward and completely remove yourself from the internet, then you should also consider discussing this with friends and family. Most people are likely to be considerate when you ask them to not post your photo or location online, for example. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to get more videos like this that will help you with your digital preparedness. If you have any ideas for more videos or just want to share your experiences with prepping, please leave a comment down below. Stay safe, stay prepared, more digital prepping to come.